And I don't have an issue with it. Like, I know a lot of people get caught up in, like... Oh, now, you have to have an issue with it, because that's going to be the clickbait right, title yeah. to this segment. Yeah, fuck Virgil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's your sound bite. Um, Today, we talk about... Man, so I actually want to ask, too, about... Um, do you... So I know you mentioned, uh, you know, Off-White and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the, the Virgil Abloh uh, sneaker craze. But uh, did you know he DJs, too? Yes. Do you have opinions on that? Um, I've seen... I When he was doing... Because I've heard he's pretty good. But. I, I, so I saw him when he was doing the whole Ben Trill stuff. Um, when it was him... Uh, what's the other dude? Um, it was like... Two of them that were with him. I can't remember the guy's name. He's also, I think, done some stuff with Kanye. Um, and it Don was terrible. C. Was it? Don C. It wasn't Don C. No. I can't remember what the hell this guy's name is. He's from, he was from New York. I lived in New York. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, when they were doing the Ben Trill stuff, they used to DJ as Ben Trill, basically. Gotcha. And it was god awful. I remember seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> but this was probably like, I don't even, dude, this is maybe. Yeah, it was like 2013, I want to say. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yep, right around that time. So, like, I saw them at uh, Fool's Gold Day Off in Brooklyn. They had like a little festival and they were DJing it. And it was terrible. Uh, <laughs> but so, so, Wait, time out. What, what to you makes it terrible? Just I the mean, music they selection? They couldn't the... transition between songs. It was like what we call train wrecking, where it's like the songs aren't synced up. So it's just two things playing on top of each other. You know what the fuck's uh, going on? Okay. I'm pretty sure they blew out the speakers Interesting. just from like probably over cranking everything. Uh, so it was just like static going on. Um, it just wasn't, it wasn't, it was obviously very obvious. It was just people that really never really DJ like that. Uh-huh. Um, and I mean, I, I guess as a DJ, you, you take some sort of offense to it. You know, right, right. like this people. is a disgrace yeah. to my art form. You know? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Like blood, sweat and tears in my mom's <laughs> basement. These guys are uh, you know, on a giant stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, I, I would be, I mean, I've seen, I guess videos after I haven't seen him live since that, but like, it seems like he knows his crowds. He's like up on music, which is cool. And I don't have an issue with it. Like, I know a lot of people get caught up in like, now oh, you well, have to have an issue with it because that's going to be the clickbait right, title yeah. to this segment yeah fuck Virgil uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's your sound bite um, no I mean like people get caught oh the models that are DJing and this and that and like I'm like dude I, I, I get it it's like you know it's it's just you you get into it like I, I right. can I can understand why yeah I mean it's the same thing with comedians like yeah. some some people are not comedians but right. they're famous so like right. they can tour off of being a comic it's like do you have an issue with that no I don't yeah because I'm like if it's funny people will laugh and right. if it's not funny People won't laugh and they'll know never to see you again. Yeah. But to me, it's like, if you want to build a brand, mm-hmm. A, it's consistency, right? It's yep. the same thing in sports, music, arts, anything. So like Kanye can't just come out with graduation. He had to come out with all these right. hits for us to be like, oh, this guy's a legend, right? Yeah. Um, and similarly with comedians, it's just like, it, and additionally, especially nowadays with what we were talking about with podcasts and just like unlimited access to anything. Yeah. It's like, there, there's no, it's not like it's just ABC, CBS, and NBC anymore. Right. Like, it, it's not like there's a set number of sitcoms, there's a set number of comedy specials that are handed out every year. Mm. So if I don't get, if, if he gets it and I don't get it, then, you know, right. it's more like, you know, we all have a lane we can fill. We all have a crowd we can find or a mm-hmm. fan base that we can build for ourselves. Yeah. So, I mean, all right, yeah, do your thing. Right. Best of luck to you. And if it's good, I'm happy for you. If it's not good, you'll realize it quick enough. Yeah. I mean, I think in 2019, you kind of have to be multifaceted, you know, like even as a musician, you're saying you have to create a brand outside of like just your music. Like that's what social media does for a lot of people. You know, it's like there are a lot of people who have, you know, uh, careers as like, like Joji was like a YouTuber, you know, yeah, and yeah. like his fan base transitioned over, but like he's a multifaceted brand. Cause right. he's also kind of a personality as well right, as right. a musician. And, and I think that I can understand what somebody wanting to extend themselves. You know, that's right. like me getting mad about that. But now I have like a, a little vintage clothing store. And I'm going to, you know, somebody who might've like vintage their life. And right. like, yeah. So you're like life. almost like a reverse Virgil. You right. Know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, reverse Virgil. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Way better DJ though. But, uh, <laughs> bear, 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 bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, yeah. So Damn, I, I'm so mad this sound is not working. Now. <laughs> I'm like, I want to hit like, you with the super it. hot fire. Oh! <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I, I can't get mad at it because I have more interest outside of music too. Right, so like, right, how right. can I shit on somebody else because they're showing an interest right, in something right. else? You know? Speaking of which, well, actually, I did want to get back to Virgil for a second, but uh, along the same lines, any opinions on uh, Paulie D? Paulie D. Um... Because he's got a Vegas residency, right. you know, yeah, uh, touring. Seems like a really nice guy. Uh, I've seen him play once and you it was have? terrible. Okay. All right. uh, so, you know, he, it, for me, it was, was mind boggling as somebody who was DJing even prior to that. Like, it was really bad. It wasn't good. But um, again, what, what was bad about this one? Same thing. Like, couldn't transition between tracks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't, the track selection wasn't great, you know. Um, 
And you know, I mean, we all have off nights, so I, I would, you know, I, maybe it's just me. But I mean, I've heard, I've heard other people have seen him too. But okay. yeah. like, it's not, I feel bad because like he's a nice, he seems like a nice dude. I have, like, yeah, I see. I, I want to hang out with the guy. Right. Like, yeah. I, he seems like the time of my life. Right. Like, exactly. I mean, listen, somebody could see me and have seen me and be like, yeah, he sucked. So I mean, like, it's all obviously opinion. At right. The end right. Of the day. right, right. Yeah. Um, but he, I think also his role isn't necessarily to be a great DJ. It's like to put personality. On show. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, like I want to go see Paulie D. I don't give a shit what the right. music is. Right. You know? Yeah. Exactly. It probably appeals to guys like me actually because I'm not like a music connoisseur right, exactly. so I just know I'm going to see D- Paul D and as long as he doesn't play like I don't know the baby shark song right, 8,000 right. times like I'll be good you know? no you're, I mean you're right I, I went like friends who are not musical and they had a good time so right, I, you right. know it's just it's again it's all relative you yeah, know yeah. Um, but I mean I don't like so I, you can't go to see Transformers 2 with like a cinephile and be like right. oh this was not Oscar worthy I'm like you know shit yeah, exactly. like, what do like you a, expect uh, you're watching a bad horror movie for because like, it's entertaining right. not necessarily because you think it's great acting right. or, or the girl is hot in it, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's like a lot of boobs <laughs> like, cool of course I'm watching it but uh, yeah I mean you know listen I, I don't hate on it at all I think he is a genius the way he transitioned out of that show and like took something he was already doing and blew it up even yeah, more. I would probably say he's the most successful of them all yeah. because of that. You know? Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, it, it's, it's smart. You know, it's like, okay, I was given this gift of a platform. Let me do something with right, it. You right, know, as right. opposed to like, let me just make a bunch of club appearances until nobody gives a shit anymore. Because yeah. that's lame at the end of the day where you're just like the guy getting paid at a random club to stand there and do nothing. You yep. know, at least he created a brand. I think he ended up having a deal with Junit at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I remember right in Times Square, they it was huge ass billboards of his face. Yeah, and stuff. Oh I mean, so yeah, he like you know he really went for it, and you know he's built up a career from that. I can't like he's no longer relying on just being the guy on the Jersey Shore. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. You know, building something up, which I can't hate on that. Right, at all. right. Yeah, no, that's 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 where it's at, man. That's what yeah. you got to do. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, back to Virgil. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, again, me not being musically inclined, just my sense of seeing him DJing, like the crowd clearly seems into it, whether yeah. it's because of Off White or not. It's just like. I don't know. I, I almost feel like it, it kind of helps him have a creative uh, diversity to him so that he can like try and pull ideas from music to yeah. fashion to this to that. So I don't know. I've, I'm with it. But yeah, I mean, you know. I think it keeps him in like the thick of it all you right. know, culturally because I mean, he's not just like DJing bullshit places. He's like DJing cool parties, you know, uh, and he's like maybe even some Vegas stuff I think I've seen. But like he's DJing a lot of cool stuff with like influential people. Right. So he's also I think it puts him in the realm of like his customers. Well, you know, it puts him there and seeing like some of the most maybe stylish people in the world at the places he's playing. Right. And he might get inspired by it as well. You know, yep. so I think, yeah, I think it's cool. I'm sure for him, it's a lot of fun to do right. that. I'm surprised he hasn't come on the breakfast club. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, they're not like yeah. Uh, I mean, not, we were joking about Charlotte's style before, but yeah, no, nah, they're not super into the fashion world. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how many interviews he does like that. Really, I guess, right? Yeah, I, I don't. From what I've seen, because uh, you know, I, I've done deep dives into his his work too, yeah. um, and uh, you know, a lot of the interviews I see are definitely in the more of the fashion world, right? But I don't know. I feel like uh, that would be a good platform for him. Uh, although I, it probably would have made a lot more sense right around the time the whole Nike package was coming out yeah. although he's still or doing like a ton of stuff. Uh, yeah i mean even stuff. that yeah. yeah so i mean and i know they've he, they've referenced him on like the rumor report yeah. and several times and whatnot but uh but yeah it's just kind of interesting i would have expected him to maybe do it but maybe he doesn't give a shit I don't yeah know. i mean he he doesn't strike me as somebody who's like dying to be yeah, in right, front right. of the camera kind right, of person right, right, you know right. what i mean he kind of just seems he's like likes his lane and does you know He's like the opposite of Kanye, I guess, kind of. <laughs> yeah, but even Kanye, I feel like he's gotten gotten away from, uh, you know, these public interviews. Although I know Charlamagne got that one uh, right. dope interview with him. but I think maybe um, he was for, I, I don't know if he got away out of it because he didn't want to. You know what I mean? It's because it just wasn't a good look for him anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I don't, because I, I think Kanye likes talking about Kanye at the end of the day, right? Yeah. You know, so I don't think he would ever shy away from it. I think it's just like, he goes, I think he also probably feels people are beneath him to a degree, I think. Um, and also... <laughs> he says some crazy shit whenever he does it. So here's the thing. Here, here's my thoughts on that. Okay. Like I listen to the full interviews because mm-hmm. again, I have the attention span to do right. so. Uh, <laughs> and I, and as I'm listening, I'm like, I also have a fucked up brain. Yeah. Okay. Cause that's why I'm a comedian now. Yeah. And um, part of having fucked up thoughts is understanding a filter. You need to put on your tongue before the words come out so yep. that you don't sound like, yeah, whatever right. so so i feel like he's maybe just missing a little part of that sometimes where like he says something yeah i personally am able to look at what he said and be like okay i clearly he used the absolute wrong word here right. but i know what he's trying to say right at least i think i do whereas i don't think a a lot of people are even able to like discern the yeah. difference sometimes and b all these different media outlets maybe you guys included too I, i'm not um uh, saying specifically i'm just saying you guys as part of this whole media 
thing that like puts out like uh, the either the radicalized clips of like right. yo check out what he said yeah. you know what I mean I feel like it, it suddenly loses all the original intent of the meaning of it and and then he gets screwed out of it and then yeah. eventually he just wakes up he has he has to eventually wake up someday and be like yo fuck all these guys I'm yeah. gonna stop doing interviews no one understands me and the people that maybe even do understand me are taking my words and like misconstruing them mm-hmm. and then running with it to get clicks. Fuck y'all. You know what I mean? No, I mean, I definitely could see him doing that. I think he probably isn't uh, self-aware enough about how he's coming across. You know what I mean? And I think I think you're definitely right. Most people have that filter. Uh, and I can, I, I personally have been able to, like, I can see what he's trying to say and discern it and not, like, look at it from a sensitive point of view and, like, really just try to hear what he's saying. Um, but for the masses, for you to go on public platforms, you, you know, do and better. I respect yeah. a lot of the things he says, especially when he talks about like, you know, wanting to invest in entrepreneurs and like, you know, teaching college kids that like, when he goes there speaking about like, you know, them empowering themselves and empowering the arts. Right. Yeah. All that stuff is amazing. I just don't think he is the right brand ambassador yeah, yeah, yeah. for that, <laughs> you know, because he, I think is so passionate about what he's saying. He gets overly emotional yeah. and caught up in the moment and just his entire messaging gets lost. And then, yes, obviously the media is going to sensationalize it for clicks. Um, and you know, and then he just basically looks like a crazy person and you can't really believe kind of what he says, you know? Yeah.